Hello everybody and welcome to the V-Ray for Cinema 4D webinar. My name is Ivan Shaikov, Product Manager of V-Ray for Cinema 4D here at Chaos. I would like to use this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about this release. V-Ray 6 introduces powerful new tools to build anything imaginable in a streamlined workflow with faster rendering and enhanced post-production capabilities. With all new features, V-Ray made a major step forward and now everyone is able to bring more realism to their image by easily adding details such as stickers, labels, cracks, and create 3D geometry patterns by using V-Ray Decal and V-Ray Enmesh. You're now able to create the perfect sky with the new procedural cloud generation system and bring color and life to your environment by using V-Ray Particles and ACCG. But before we dive into more details on how those features were used for the creation of our video, I want to show you a few tips and tricks to enhance your creative workflow. Let's jump into Cinema 4D. When starting with V-Ray for the first time, you want to have a quick and easy way to access the most used V-Ray tools. For that purpose, we've added a command that will create a V-Ray toolbar for you. It's located under the V-Ray menu, Tools, V-Ray Toolbar. After the toolbar is created, it can be moved and positioned anywhere like any other Cinema 4D toolbar. Now let me show you how we can move the camera within the V-Ray frame buffer during interactive rendering. This is very useful when you want to take a look at the scene from a different angle or zoom in and work on a small detail without changing the position of the original camera. Let's start the interactive rendering, then click and hold the control key and use the left mouse button to move around. If we hold the shift key, and use the left mouse button, we can rotate the camera. And if we hold the shift key and use the mouse scroll wheel, we can zoom in and zoom out. To reset the camera, we need to deactivate and reactivate the scene camera again. Another useful tip is to take advantage of the back to beauty render element to further tweak the final look of your image. By activating the beauty group inside the Render Elements Manager, it will automatically make a composition that will include all the channels as layers inside the V-Ray frame buffer. Now we can make corrections to any channels separately until we reach the desired result, just like I'm doing with the lighting render element over here. And of course, if we want to go back, to the previous look, we can just delete the effect and we are good to go. To finalize, I'll show you how to quickly get help for any V-Ray option. By right-clicking on the label of the parameter and then selecting the show help command, a browser window will navigate to the specific description of that parameter inside the V-Ray documentation. This is very useful for getting information and examples for everything related to V-Ray. Now let's continue with the next part of the webinar where Yunal Subu from our 3D team will show you how we used V-Ray 6 to create our release video. Hi everybody, my name is Yunal and I'm a 3D artist at Chaos. In this webinar, I will show you how our team was able to achieve the final result for the V-Ray 6 for Cinema 4D release video. The project was quite interesting to work on since we already had an established concept and a storyboard. But as with the previous releases of V-Ray, the environment had to be different. So right after the 3ds Max and Maya videos, we had to start planning for our brand new world. That gave us the creative opportunity to have a completely different story for our hero object. Fortunately, everybody loved the idea of a completely different planet, with an extraterrestrial looking environment inspired by the Avatar movie.
Before we start, I would like to give you a quick preview of what we are going to cover in this webinar. We will start with the look development stage and how we actually approach the project. Then we will take a look at how we created a moody atmosphere using some colorful particles. And after creating the environment, we will populate our futuristic interior with ready to render assets and accessories. Finally, we will take a look at few particular material improvements and finish the webinar with some useful tips about VRA6 for Cinema 4D. With all that out of the way, let's get this webinar started. At the start of the project, we already had in mind what our hero object would look like. That was thanks to the inspiring concept by Entry Entrev that we've got to work with. Next thing on the list was the environment which our robot had to be part of and explore. At this stage, we have to see how our house would fit in, in a futuristic and probably a bit alien looking environment. That meant we needed an easy way to swap different looks without spending much time on this. To do so, we had a few dome lights with different 360 AGRIs and quickly went through a few very different ideas. Once we chose a specific one, we had to position and scale it a bit more precisely. And the finite mode was quite helpful with that. When you turn it on, you can immediately see that your light has its own size and relative position. Just make sure the dome light is big enough so our house can actually fit inside of it. And at any point you can make more precise adjustments using the height, radius and ground blend values. These options will help a lot with blending your environment into the scene and they should be adjusted based on your own AGRI. Alright, now we need to find the right camera angle. We use different composition guides all the time in Cinema 4D. And now we can have such in the frame buffer, making finding the perfect angle that much easier. Simply add a proportion guide layer and choose a preferred type. This is quite handy because now we can match our viewport guides to the ones we see in the VFB and find the right spot that much quicker. Another quite useful feature is the new panorama view mode. Before we enable it, we need to make sure we are rendering with a spherical camera that has a 360 degree field of view and a 2x1 image ratio. Finally, simply enable it from the view menu by choosing panorama view and just use the middle mouse click to rotate around and preview your scene. This new option is quite handy if you already have a rendered out image and you want to look around without the need of re-rendering anything. Okay. So far, we have explored some of the look development options that hopefully will speed up your pre-production stage as well. Let's now move on to the production preparation. We actually quite like the Milky Way environment, but it didn't really fit the theme we had in mind for the Cinema 4D video. So we decided to add some extraterrestrial plants and small alien fireflies. Lots and lots of fireflies. And as you can guess, that meant quite a lot of particle simulations. Now that's something you can do with the native Cinema 4D emitter or thinking particles. But what if the VFX artist is more familiar with a third party solution, such as X particles? Well, now with the Viri particles object, we can render such simulations and have greater control over their look by choosing if you would like to render them as Phoenix particles or Viri particles. Something like this will reduce the time spent on exporting in different file formats and then re-importing assets back into the scene significantly. Once we had everything locked, we moved on to the production stage. We started to discuss different shots and the lighting and assets needed for each of them. And in every shot we have assets from the Chaos Cosmos library. In v 6 we have updated our library with hundreds of assets like furniture, accessories, vegetation, materials, AGRI maps and more. To illustrate to you the diversity of assets we have, I will show you how we managed to furnish the entire interior simply by importing Cosmos Assets into our scene. Once imported, I can use Cinema 4D's Place tool and position the assets exactly where I want to. The object will automatically align to the surface and that gives us the creative freedom to pick and position it quickly and easily. 
Oh, and by the way, here's an everyday production tip, if you haven't discovered it yet, of course. I often use the small heart icon on the bottom right corner of each thumbnail. This way, I can quickly filter the assets I have liked for the particular shot. I also often tend to check the geometry of a model right before I import it, so this slide comes in very handy. We also took advantage of many ready-to-use materials for most of the interior, especially for the fabrics. And the great thing about the Cosmos materials is that they are fully customizable. So let me just convert this one from a classic to a very note material. Now we can easily change its whole appearance just by introducing a few new nodes, but I'm pretty sure that a slight color correction will be just enough. Next up were some additional interior details. And as with any production really, you are never fully satisfied with the amount of detail, but most importantly, you are always against a firm and usually pretty tight deadline. We still wanted though to have a few more details here and there, and especially on this wall, but we couldn't afford to spend much time on this. That's why, instead of painting additional details in an external application, or trying to model them into the existing surface, we used the V-Ray decals. That saved us the hustle of constantly replacing textures. Decals are also extremely handy to use and in combination with the displacement texture they can produce great results. One other quite useful feature is the ability to apply them on a curved surfaces too. Just make sure to adjust the normal angle value accordingly. We can also have as many decals as we need and when we are done adding detail with them, we can simply parent them to the house snow object. That way they can come along once everything has animation on it. Now, we also took advantage of some material improvements. With the addition of energy compensation, rough materials and surfaces will look even more realistic. Let me focus on this mechanical part and show you a render with both V-Ray 5 and V-Ray 6. If we compare both images, you'll see that there is a quite significant difference in the final look. But just to get the point across even better, let me show you a comparison with the shader ball scene. With the new model, the energy gets preserved, and that would be most visible on the rough looking materials. Note that this option is activated by default for newly created materials, and you still have an option to do so for previously created ones. Alright, the next material feature I want to share with you is quite easily visible since big portions of our house are taken by its windows. I'm sure most of you know that glass is relatively simple to create, but it's also not the most exciting material to set up. To make it visually more appealing, we need to rely on its main properties, refractions and reflections. So we use the new thin film option to offset its reflection color based on a surface angle. Once we enable the option, you can immediately see some colorful light scattering based on the minimum and maximum thickness values. And you can always adjust those values to achieve your desired look. We were aiming for a futuristic extraterrestrial look, so we ended up using these particular values. This way our windows are not simply reflecting the environment, but also have a slight tint color on their own. Now, all those windows seemed a bit unsafe for a sci-fi house exploring a different planet, so, at some point during the project, we were discussing some sort of a visual clue that our house is capable of protecting itself, and an energy shield covering the most fragile parts seemed like a good way to visualize that. We could have simply used the texture as an opacity source, but in a curved or twisted form, that can cause a texture to stretch or look very strange from a certain camera angle. So we ended up tiling a small piece of geometry instead using V-Ray N-Mesh. In order to use it, you will need a pattern that is repeatable. So let me show you how to set it up. Select your pattern, 
and create an Enmesh object. Now all we need to do is to select the object we want our pattern to be spread on. And that's it. Now we simply set the tiling of the pattern and if needed adjust the crop box size so that we get a perfect repetition. And you can always swap patterns with an existing Enmesh object. Just make sure to use the fit in object space button so you get the proper size for your crop box. So once we approach the end of the production stage, we were constantly thinking about the lighting. And we hadn't decided on the final look yet. So we started experimenting with different dramatic lighting setups with lots of cloud coverage. To block out the sunlight, we relied on the new cloud system. With a single checkbox, we can generate different types of clouds. And the higher the value in the density parameter, the more clouds you have in your scene. The variety value will give you a finer control over the look and distribution of the clouds. While the serious amount will dictate how much cloud coverage you will get in the upper parts of your atmosphere. The thickness value was quite important for this shot for us, since increasing it will make the clouds look much heavier and that was exactly what we were aiming for. The height value is pretty self-explanatory and probably an interesting thing to mention here is that currently you cannot have a height value so low that your camera is above the clouds. I suppose that's something many of you thought when you saw that value. I know I did. Alright, the next two offset values will give us a very quick way to animate our clouds. So let me just put a couple of keyframes. And in combination with the last couple of phasing values, which will change the cloud appearance naturally during their movement, we can have a great looking dynamic cloud system. But after a while, we decided that we wouldn't need the clouds to be animated for this final shot. And we continued testing different and even darker setups until we ended up with a quite moody combination of an HDRI and a sun and sky system. All right. A great new addition to the feature set of VRA6 for Cinema 4D is the added support for ACCG. You can now very easily define your rendering color space right from the color management rollout and take full advantage of the wider gamut of ACCG compared to sRGB. You can see the difference in these two shots, especially in the filmic rollout of the highlights and in the richer saturation of some colors. And that's pretty much how we went on producing the Vray 6 for Cinema 4D video. All that's left is the post-production and some final touches. Finally, I would love to highlight some quality of life improvements introduced in Vray 6 for Cinema 4D. Now we've got light cache in interactive rendering, so your interactive render previews are identical to the final production frames. Another very useful update is the conversion from standard and classic Vray materials to V-Ray Note materials. We also now have a right-click menu in the VFB, giving us the option to select an object, a material, or my personal favorite, to pull focus right from the frame buffer. Alright, that was it. I really hope you enjoyed this inside look of the process for the V-Ray 6 for Cinema 4D release video, and that it got you excited to go ahead and try it out for yourself. I want to thank you for joining this webinar.